Hey guys and welcome to the Reptile Project. Today is a pretty special day because today we are going to be catching a red-tailed hawk. We're heading out to Fairview and hopefully we'll be able to see lots of them around. So, so first here's the trap. We'll be using stick with that. And we got our gerbils coming in with us. Close that before they get out. I know there's going to be some of you out here who may not like this video, but please watch the entire thing, uh, do a little bit of research, educate yourself before placing a comment down below because there's a lot that I really want to say about what I'm doing today. So please, again, watch the entire video before leaving a comment and I'm always happy to reply and answer questions down below. The first question I seem to get normally is just why? Why keep a bird of prey? Why keep a raptor? And there is so much more to it than just wanting to own a bird. Now I am capturing this hawk to use for falconry. Falconry is an ancient tradition and an ancient sport. It's been around about 4,000 years and it's one of the oldest sports known to man. The basic definition of falconry is using either a wild caught or captive bred bird of prey and teaching them how to hunt and taking them on regular hunts and also keeping that animal. So you can't just go out and buy or catch a bird of prey. Birds of prey are protected federally and it's illegal to even just own a feather from a raptor. Now my interest in falconry started roughly a year ago when I met Jupiter the Jeer Falcon. You might remember a video that we did with him. This is when I was introduced to falconry and the moment I was able to meet Jupiter and hold him on my fist, I almost instantly fell in love. And since that time, I've been able to meet so many different raptors that are either at rescues or that are used from falconry. And I'm constantly impressed by these animals' ability as well as the ability of their trainer or their falconer to be able to teach these birds how to do these amazing things. Not only do I think that falconry looked really, really fun, but I also found it very ethical. About 80% of raptors die during their first winter because they don't know how to hunt very well and it becomes very difficult to find food during the winter. A lot of times they're dying of mostly starvation, but they can also die of illness, parasites, and sometimes even predators get to these birds. So their survival chance is very, very low. So this is one of the reasons why when capturing a wild bird of prey, you can only capture a bird that has left the nest but is still under a year old. This way you can capture and teach them how to hunt really, really well and hunt game that is mostly only available during the winter. Here in Utah, usually that is rabbits. Many falconers actually release their birds after they've trained them to hunt for a year or two. And instead of only having an about a 20% chance of survival, they now have an 80% chance of surviving their following winters and have an even higher chance of contributing to their population. So the reason I want to become a falconer is because I want to learn more about these amazing animals. I want to learn how to become a better animal trainer and I want to participate in local conservation. And thankfully, practicing falconry affects the environment and all their animals in no negative way. Now, I wasn't there to catch every single moment on camera, but I was there to catch all of the best moments. So we spent quite a lot of time that day driving around Fairview and we saw nearly 20 hawks. Uh, we tried our trap for several of them. None of them really wanted it, so we decided to start to head back home. But on our way back, we saw one more juvenile hawk and we thought, hey, you know what, why not? Let's go ahead and give it a try. So we threw our trap near the hawk and we watched for a little bit. This hawk came down nearly six times to the trap and then he flew away getting scared by a few cars that were coming down that highway. And about on the seventh time, uh, we could tell that he was caught. He so we drove close by and I was able to pick him up and safely untangle him. And after I got him off the trap, uh, we wrapped him in a towel just to keep him calm and we headed over to my sponsor's house. So that way we can get anklets and jesses on this one. Pretty sure I have a red tail. <laughs> I hope so. 
hope so. I hope I have a real tail. <laughs> Looks. He's really small though. Might be a man. Might be a man. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, he's smaller than Sasha was. Yeah. Might be a boy. Oh, I don't because I don't want to play today. I don't okay. kind of a wuss that way. <laughs> he's a lot more chill than I thought it would be. I was able to go up to him, like, oh, we're gonna go, here we have this, we're gonna go lower than your fingers, towards this, this narrow part right there. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's come to a corner. There we go. Okay. Here. Your head. Oh, I see. Trick. So I thought he wrecked his car. Yeah. And uh, I said, "What's up, dude?" He said, um, "Like, got anybody? Like, drew blood? Was Hyatt's? But that part was awesome." Come on, buddy. You're okay. Glove space. There you go. There we go. Yeah, he's not hey teaching. Buddy. Wow. Hi, Good guy. Do you have some of this stuff at home? I yeah, I've got plenty of Neosport. Okay. Alright. Oh, wow. yeah, there you go. Oh, hey, buddy. Wow, oh, look at that color. Yeah, it's just stay just like that. That'd be perfect. What you doing, dude? <laughs> he hasn't even tried to bite me. Like I've been able well, to touch Most hawks don't, yeah, don't use their mouth to kill. They use their feet. So it's not really their first defense to be here. You're pretty. You're a pretty boy. Okay, so it has been nearly a week now since I... Uh, captured this red-tailed hawk and I ended up naming him Arvid. Arvid here is settling in quite well and doing amazing. Now for the training, uh, first we started with small distances. Uh, we started with him just reaching over and grabbing food out of my hand, then progressed to a hop and then a bigger hop until eventually he was flying a few feet and now we got him flying up to about 250 feet. So he's doing very well, training really well. So far we've only gotten him to fly to the fist. Soon we will be starting to fly him to lures to start training him to hunt. Currently Arvid is flying on a creance. It's basically just a long leash that prevents him from truly flying away. Uh, right now we're just working on building trust and once we've built that trust, in about two weeks time, we will take that creance off and allow him to free fly. Now, if at this point he decides to fly away, and he, if he thinks he doesn't need me, uh, I will have to accept that. And it's totally up to him. By that time, it will be his choice whether or not he thinks that it is best to either stick with me or go back out to the wild. The goal is to have him see me as a helpful partner. I want him to know that as long as he sticks with me, he will never go hungry. Now Arvid's training is going so well and I'm sure you guys are gonna wanna see more in the future. So don't forget to like this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you can see Arvid's progression as we continue training. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please just leave them down below. I'll try to get to as many of them as I possibly can and we will see you next time.